Hi everyone, Chris Tisdell here again. Thanks for tuning in. In this presentation, I'm going to continue my series of videos on matrices. And we've been looking at row operations, row echelon forms of matrices, and Gaussian elimination. And the idea here is to solve linear systems using matrices or uh, augmented matrices and perform some operations on them to reveal the nature of solutions to the linear system. So I'm going to step you through another example that involves Gaussian elimination. Now, that's just an algorithm that produces a row echelon uh, form of a matrix, which is nice because we can read off some of the solutions to our problem. So let me share my screen with you. All right, so this is the example we're going to look at. Reduce this matrix here to a row echelon form. Now, this might represent a system of linear equations where A is basically, each row is, is like a, um, one of the equations, okay? So how do we do it? Well, here is a big, long explanation. I'm just putting that in there for completeness. I'm going to show you how to do it step by step. All right, so the first thing is you'll see the first row is a column, okay? Um, so we can't really do anything there. We move on to the next column and choose a what's known as a pivot entry or a pivot element. But before we even do that, Look at row two. Uh, sorry, yeah, row two. There's a common factor in the row. Look at row four. There's a common factor in the row. We can simplify this simply by multiplying the second row by one third, and the th the fourth row by one third also. So let's do that, and then th th this will simplify things. Okay. So if there are any common factors in the rows, we can take them out. So let's write this out then okay so i'm going to multiply row two by one third and i'm going to multiply row four by one third now how why why can i do this first of all it doesn't change the solution set to our problems and whatever you can do to li linear systems of uh, uh, simultaneous equations, you can do to rows. Okay, so let's write this down now. So the first row isn't going to change. The second row is going to become 0, 1, negative 1, 1, 1. Negative two. So you need to be careful with these operations because it's easy to make a mistake. And if you've ever been to one of my lectures, you'll know that I make lots of careless errors. Lastly, row four is one third. So each element or entry gets multiplied by a third. Zero, two, negative two, two, one, negative three. Okay. Okay, so now we can begin the process of, of uh, this row reduction, or Gaussian elimination, okay? All right, there's no entries here, all right? What we're going to do is get this up to the top. So get, um, first of all, we choose a pivot point or pivot entry, which is gonna be, in this case, this one there. And I'm going to move it up to the top of my matrix. Okay, so basically that is a pivot. We've selected a pivot element. It was one in this case, and we've swapped the pivot row to the top. Okay, so this row is going to go up to the top. So we're going to swap row one and row two. Okay, that's a, that's a, a row operation. All right, so that's my so that's my pivot, pivot entry, pivot element. So uh, I'm going to record that as the following. Row one is going to get swapped with row two. Okay. So we've got all zeros here. That's not going to change. So then I'll have one, negative one, 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 negative two. I'm going to have zero, zero, 
zero, two, three, negative one, and the other two rows don't change at all. Great. Okay, so now what? Well, here's my pivot. Everything underneath that, so the column underneath that pivot entry, I want to force those all to be zero. Now, two of them are zero, one's not. So that is in row four. So the row, next row operation will be row four equals row four minus two times row one. Okay, so let me move that up a bit. So row four is going to be row four minus two times row. So that will ensure that goes to a zero. Now, good. why did I choose this as a pivot? Why did I choose that? It's because one is a very handy number. It's very simple to use, okay? We, we want to avoid fractions wherever possible. Okay, so... The only thing that's going to change here is the fourth row. Okay, so row four equals row four minus two row one. Two minus two times one, zero. Negative two minus two times negative one. So that's negative two plus two, oh, zero. Two minus two times one, that's two minus two, zero. 1 minus 2 times 1, that's negative 1, and negative 3 minus 2 times negative 2, that's negative 3 plus 4, that's 1. Okay. So now we keep the process going on a submatrix. Choose a pivot entry or a pivot element. Move that to the top of the submatrix. Get everything underneath that zero and then continue the process. Okay, so we're not going to go on here or here. Our next sub-matrix will be, because these are all zeros, I could, I, 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 you know, I could go in there if I wanted to. That would be fine. So my next sub-matrix is, is this. You can see I've got, so we're only concerned about reducing that one now. Okay, so I've got a column of zeros here in this sub-matrix. Let's choose a pivot entry from here. Now, I'm going to choose this because it's a 1, and I can move that up to the top. All right? So that's going to be my next pivot. So I would uh, swap row 3 with row 2. So Okay. So I've got all zeros here, so nothing's going to change there. Okay, so that's going to go. So there's more zeros there. That's not going to change. So that's going to go up there. One, three, negative two, two, three, negative one, zero, negative one, one. Okay, how's that looking? Yeah, great. Okay, so we're getting there. What we would like to do now on this submatrix is reduce everything under that one to zero. So there's my there's my pivot entry. I'm going to make that a zero and make that well that's already a zero. So the next operation will be row three equals row three minus two row one. Uh, sorry, minus two row two. All right. So let's uh, let's get another piece of paper. We'll continue on. As you can see, it's kind of a slow and laborious to do it by uh, by hand, okay? And it's easy to make a mistake. So row 3 equals row 3 minus 2 row 2. Okay, so I've got the same things here. All right, so um, zero, zero, zero. So that's going to become zero. Three minus two times three, that's going to be negative three. Negative one minus two times negative two, that's negative one plus four, which is three. 
and the bottom row doesn't change. Okay, all right. We're making progress. Now what? Well, we've done that. Let's move on to the next sub matrix. There it is. Choose a pivot entry. Well, you see there's a common factor of three in this row now. So I can multiply this by, say, I don't know, a third or negative one third. If I make it negative one third, I get a one there, which is going to be good. So let's do that. Row three equals negative one third. Row three. Okay, so moving on. So that's going to go to one and that'll go to negative one. Okay, we're almost finished. Okay, now that's going to be our pivot. I want to get everything underneath that to a zero. So row four is going to equal row four plus row one. That'll make that a zero. And then we're finished. Plus a row four plus row three. Okay. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Negative one plus one, zero. One minus one, zero. So I get a row of zeros at the bottom. Okay. Phew. Okay. It's a bit tiring, right? We did quite a lot of steps there. But let's actually have a look at our matrix again. Is this in a row echelon form? Well, it is. All the rows of zeros are at the bottom. Every leading row, that is every non-zero row, has a leading entry such that when you move down the rows, the leading entries move to the right. That is in a row echelon form. Okay, so that means we can stop. We can stop. Now, this form is good for solving these linear systems of equations. Okay, because I can read off. So let's say um, your, your unknowns were... Um, you know, A, B, C, D, and E. This, the third row says 1E equals negative 1. So E equals negative 1. The second row says 1D plus 3E equals negative 2. Well, you know what E is, so it means you can get D. Then you can back substitute and get expressions from row 1. So there it is. Choose a pivot entry. Make, make It could be a 1, doesn't have to be, but 1's a good number to work with. You can make it 1 if it's not 1, just by multiplying the, the row by a number to make it 1. Move that pivot entry up the top. Get everything under that pivot entry, 0. Then move to your submatrix and start the process again. Anyway, whew, I'm exhausted. I um, hope you enjoyed this presentation. If you have any questions, any comments, put them in the comment section, but try your own row reductions, your own Gaussian elimination. Uh, I'll see you soon for more videos on matrices. Bye.